sister Shalom, Kohalo Yahweh Bashim, Hamashiach Bamalak Yahweh Shai, all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, y'all been feeling really well through the spirit. I already know y'all seen the topic, so you're here watching the video. I want to say this is a controversial topic, but you know, it's really not, you know, like the scripture says, let the word of God be true and every man a liar. You know, sisters might say that, oh, it's not lawful to uh, for a man to have two wives. It is illegal in America. It's illegal for a man to have uh, multiple wives. Um, but at the end of the day, Israel is still going to do what they want to do in their captive in the land of their captivities, just like how when it wasn't lawful for us to profess ourselves to be Jews or to keep the feast days or the Sabbath, you know, Jake was still circumcising their children, getting put to death. They were still keeping the Sabbath days, getting put to death, you know, going hard for being an Israelite. And that's in our culture for when you read the scriptures for a man to have more than one, uh, one wife. Okay, so, you know, it's kind of like denying your heritage. And if sisters say, oh, well, that's illegal here. So what if Esau makes it illegal for us to keep the feast days, for us to keep the Sabbath days? So are you going to not keep the Sabbath day just because Esau told you that you're not going to keep it? So we have to use wisdom. It's lawful and it's in the scriptures and the Lord doesn't change. So it's really not controversial when you know the scriptures and you have understanding. You have to go based upon precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You can't go based upon how you feel, especially sisters, because if we did everything based upon how we feel, then I don't know, a lot of us would be in jail. So, <laughs> well, I don't know what situation we would be in, but you can't do things based off of how you feel, okay? We have to do things based off of the law, statutes, and commandments that the Lord gave us. And that's why I'm doing this video for sisters because it's a lot of sisters that are considering being a second wife. Okay, you might be courting a brother and he has a wife and, you know, or he has another wife and he has children, uh, he has a family. So this video is in more so particular for those sisters that are looking um, into being an addition to a man's household, okay? First and foremost, there's a lot of things that come with being a second wife and disclaimer, I am not a second wife, nor have I had to deal with a second wife. Um, but based off of the experience uh, and the counsels over my years of being in the truth, this is kind of all of the wisdom that I've picked up from dealing with uh, sisters in the type of situations that they're in when it comes to when it comes to their husbands dealing with sister wives or a, a second wife dealing with a sister and her family. I've kind of I don't want to say I've seen it all because I haven't seen it all and I, I really don't want to see it all but I've seen some stuff and I just all of my wisdom is based off of the things that I've seen um, from the councils and the experiences that I've dealt with while dealing with uh, sisters and our families in the truth. OK, so I just want to get that out there. All right. But first and foremost, there's a lot of things. There's multiple things to take into consideration when you're looking to be a man's second wife, when you look when you're looking to be an addition to someone's household and finances. Uh, that's one of them. finances is a big plays a big role when it comes into entering into a man's family. OK, let's get into it. And I say finances because of Deuteronomy in the law. This is Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17. If a man have two wives. So the Lord put this in here for a reason. The Lord obviously told Moses to write this in the law for a reason. Everything was written a four time for our learning. Okay, this was written in the law for a reason. If a man have two wives because this is a practice, this is an Israelite custom of a man having two wives. And also, let's finish reading, one be loved and another hated. And we already seen that in the scriptures. We kind of seen that with uh, Leah and Rachel. One was loved and one was hated. Okay. And they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, 
that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of his firstborn is his. So this was written, uh, a brother was dealing with uh, multiple wives. Okay, because a lot of the times it's a fight over an inheritance. That's why I'm talking about finances, finances and how that plays a major role in becoming a second wife. When it comes to finances, you want to make sure that things are done decently and in order. The Lord always works everything out for all of us that love him, that's keeping the commandments. Just paraphrasing Romans 8 and 28. Everything always works out for us. But you have to look at the situation and be circumspect. If, Lord forbid, you deal with a brother and he's legally married to a sister, to his first wife, but y'all can't get legally married. Y'all can't legally get married. And if the courts do find out that your husband did marry you while he was already married to his first wife, it's going to be null and void. So it's not even really going to matter. So it's not going to, y'all aren't going to be legally married on papers although you'll be married in the eyes of Yahweh by Shimei Shai, but just not legally to the states so if something were to happen his first wife and his firstborn his family they'll get his benefits they'll get not unless your husband puts you on um makes you a benef a beneficiary of a life insurance policy maybe you know one wife on the other half of the life insurance and you get the other half or he has a certain type of will set up to make sure everybody is taken care of lord forbid if something were to happen and just say oh you know everything should go to me he loved me first you know or he loves me more uh it should go to me and my children no that's not how it works the lord said that if the firstborn son be hers as hated then everything is going to go to that is going to go to him and this is something that should be talked about. You know, a lot of the times when Israel, you know, they want to get married to people or, you know, you want to, sisters might think uh, carnally about getting married. You might think a brother is attractive. You might like the brother. You might like how the brother teach. But you have to think about these things. This is your life that you're talking about. This is your, your, you could end up in real life situations like this. This is Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17 is a real life situation that tends to happen. So everything would technically go to that inheritance would go to the firstborn of the, of the woman that's hated. That could be possibly his first wife because that's his firstborn. Like the Lord said, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of his, of the firstborn is his. And you know, Esau even do that when they be dealing with the firstborn. Everything goes to the firstborn, to the firstborn. All right. And that's a custom. That's just the custom of our people. OK, so you have to kind of prepare yourself for that. As a Israelite princess, as a daughter of Yehovah Bashim Shai, that you're not getting yourself into a situation where the finances are out of order, okay? That could possibly, you know, maybe leave you with nothing. And that's just keeping it real. Reminds me of DMX's fiance losing the case to be declared a common law, uh, declared to be his common law wife, although they were engaged, but they never got papers legally saying that they were married so she and he didn't have a will for her set up so she lost everything she couldn't um get his estate so and it's different in different states only eight states that recognize the common law marriage colorado iowa kansas montana new hampshire south carolina texas and utah but it also says however in the states that acknowledge common law marriages you would have to be uh, married or dealing with that person, including living together for seven years is like the common time frame for common law marriages. So that's something for sisters to research on their own. 
DMX, Earl Simmons died without a will in April from alleged drug overdose. Five of his 15 children, including three sons from his marriage to his first wife, uh, Tashira Simmons, have already petitioned the New York court to be declared administrators of the rapper's estate. When someone does, oh, they said does. When someone dies without a will, their estate is called uh, interstate and their assets are distributed according to the state's interstate laws of inheritance and it can take considerable time and expense to settle the estate so you want to make sure things are done decently in order so that you know you're going to be set up okay to inherit something if your husband were to unfortunately die lord forbid something that sisters have to take into consideration although the lord is always going to make sure that his people are good we've never seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread have to ask the brother that you're courting hey before we get married is there any way that you know i would be able to you know be still taken care of if something were to happen okay that's something to talk about and be prepared for your husband's inheritance to go to his firstborn son if he has a firstborn son okay and another thing with finances, do not put yourself in a financial situation where you're a nurse, you work, uh, I don't know, maybe 15, I don't know, 20 hour shifts, three times a week. You making about, I don't know, 50, $60 an hour, $60 an hour, whatever the case may be, you courting a brother, but you're also giving this brother money to help him with his wife and his children. Okay. And you could be given this brother could say, hey, any checks that you have, give them to me, put them in my account. You don't need access to it. And that kind of goes into um, financial abuse. And that's in the, one of the videos that I put about courting. So if you haven't seen the video about uh, red flags about courting, this is a red flag because sometimes based off of what I've seen in this truth, some brothers may try to deal with you because of your financial uh your financial uh situation okay so you want to make sure that the brother that you're dealing with has his stuff together that the brother has a job that the brother you know has his own okay he has his own place to stay that he has a car that he has all of these certain things so that you're not going to be used up and abused this as a perspective also as being a mother for my daughter i would want my daughter to be married to a man that has his finances in order okay but enough with me just talking we can get into the scriptures all right this is first timothy five and eight but if any provide not for his own especially for those of his own house he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel now, just because the brother go out and teach and the brother real mighty, you know, his videos might be mighty or he might be a you might go out and see the brother and think that the brother has everything together. And you kind of just going based off of what you see, but you haven't proven a brother. You have to prove his brother and, and make sure that this brother is providing for his own family. That this brother isn't physically sitting at home talking to you while his wife is at work and the kids at school and she got to come home clean the house pay the bills do everything but he's not providing for his family that's not a brother that you you don't want to be joined to a family like that because that brother would be worse than an infidel you want to be with a brother that's taking care of his family and that can take care of not only his first wife but take care of you and that's important if a brother can't financially take care of you and his first wife and his children with his first wife then that brother is going to be an infidel and do you really want your husband to be an infidel no you don't you don't want to be with a man that's an infidel that's worse than an infidel.
so important to make sure that you are dealing with the brother that has his stuff together financially. And I understand. I understand, sisters, brothers. You might talk to a brother. He might be falling on hard times, like I said in previous videos. We in captivity. Brothers going to fall on hard times. But proving a brother is that he gets up and he's like, okay, look, there's some type of change. There's some type of progress. It's not, yeah, I've been looking for a job. I've been looking for a job. Yeah. I've been looking. He been looking for a year. It still don't have a job. And this is somebody, you want to be their second wife? Why? So you can take care of him? No. A wise woman builds her household up. So you want to build, you, you want to build your household up. But you need your man to lead you and to help you build your household up. You're not the leader. You should not lead a man financially telling him, but here, I'm going to give you money for this and I'm going to give you money for that. And you make sure. No. Ecclesiasticus 25 and 22. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. So if you're maintaining this brother his wife, his kids, his bills, his family, you're going to, it's going to, a spirit is going to come on you where you're full of anger, impute, impudence, and much reproach. You're going to kind of resent the brother. You're not going to be happy. <coughs> Definition of impudence. It's not showing due respect for another person. So you're not going to have respect for your husband <laughs> If you're financially uh, providing for your husband, it's going to put a spirit on you where you start to, like I said, resent your husband. Respect for him. Because you see that he took you on as a second wife, but he can't really do anything um, to help take care of you financially. Sisters might say, well, you know, I don't really need my husband to do anything for me. You know, I can just work and I'm OK with working and. That's fine, but you still want to make sure that your husband is able to take care of you and his first wife and children and the children that you may have with him. Or if he can't do that, then the brother is an infidel. So it's OK if you still work, you can still help. But at the end of the day, the other wife could be working, you could be working. But if your husband can't take care of you, and that other family, then your husband is still going to be an infidel. Um, hey, are you going to be able to financially support, you know, me, Lord forbid, if something happened, were to happen to me and I have to be on a disability um, and I can't work anymore? Would you be able, are you going to be there to be able to help me? And the brothers say, oh, you know, don't worry about that. You know, the scripture says, you know, think not of tomorrow. Good man is going to have a plan and he's going to have an inheritance for his family. And his brother should be able to give out portions to everyone in his family. Sure, things are done decently and in order. And I wanted to bring out the account with uh, 1 Samuel with the brother uh, Elkanah and his two wives. This is 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, 2 on down. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah and the name of the other was Penaniah. And Penaniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Yeah, and the sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanai offered, he gave into he gave to Penaniah his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But Hannah he gave a worthy por portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Before we touch on anything else, I wanted to bring up a point how Elkanai. He was able to provide for Penaniah. He brought a portion to Penaniah, her children, her sons, and her daughters that he had with her. Okay, and he was still able to give Hannah a worthy portion. Okay, 
So that brother is still have to, has to do things for his family. Okay. So sisters should never put themselves in a position where you're maintaining that man and his family. That's shameful. And that's not how things should go. You're not going to be happy doing that. So you want to make sure that the a brother business. has his stuff together financially. All right, this is Proverbs 13 and 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. But we're going to touch on a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. All right. And let's think about things that are inheritances in this captivity. Besides, you know, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. An inheritance could be a house. It could be a trust fund. It could be uh, money saved up, a will, a life insurance policy. A good man is going to leave an inheritance to not only his children, but his grandchildren as well. A good man is also not going to leave an inheritance to his children's children, but to his wife and to his wives. And I wanted to bring out Judith chapter 8. Okay. And then Manasseh was her husband of her tribe and kindred who died in the barely harvest. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head and he fell on his bed and died in the city of Bethulah. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothem and Balamo. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. She carried a tent upon the top of her house and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wear her widow's apparel. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons and the feast and the solemn days of the house of Israel. This is the main uh, verse that I wanted to read. Verse 7. She was also a, of a goodly countenance and very beautiful to behold. And her husband Manasseh had left her gold and silver and man ser men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands. And she remained upon them. There was none that gave her an ill word as she feared God greatly. But the main point of this is, you no, know, unfortunately, her husband gave up the ghost. But her husband was obviously, you know, a wealthy man. And he had left Judith with gold, silver, cattle. Of course, you know, in this captivity, some of us, we don't have those things. I wish. I wish we had, you know, gold, silver, cattle. We might have a pair of gold earrings, a bracelet, you know, that might be it. And maybe a pet, a couple of pets or something. But, you know, we have, we still have... There are still things that brothers can leave to us. And I just gave you all those examples. So you still want to make sure that you're going to be well taken care of. Lord forbid, if something happened to your husband, you know, and that's something that, you know, we, we don't like to think of. No one wants to think about that. But you want to make sure that, you know, you're going to be OK and that you're going to be taken care of. It says, and she remained upon them. So everything that her husband had. He left it for her and she still stayed in that house. She still had everything that he left. Okay. You are thinking about courting a brother and the brother don't have everything together. Why don't, does it hurt to wait to prove the brother to see if he's going to have everything lined up and ready for you and your future children, Lord willing? It don't hurt to take your time to prove people and to get to know people. And if a man is pressuring you, say, well, you don't want to be my second wife. I'll find somebody else. Psh, okay, then. You can wait. We got to wait. We have to literally have patience. We have to have patience on getting the kingdom of heaven every single day. We have to have patience when we're dealing with spiritual warfare every single day. Being in this captivity, we have patience. So you can have patience and wait for a brother that's going to be right for you. That's fitting the description of a good man that has things in order that's working 
that's taking care of their family. But like I said, you're going to be full of anger and much um, impudence if you're taking care of another man and his family. Now, if you're courting a brother and you ask this brother, brother, do you think that, you know, uh, you will be able to take care of me or I'm going to, you know, be OK? You know, do am I going to have to work or am, would I be able to stay at home? Uh, what would be the situation for me? Uh, I would like to be at home like your wife is at, like your first wife is at home. And if he says, you know what, or if you say, are you going to be able to take care of me? If uh, something were to happen, you know, to me and I can't work for a bit, you know, if the brother says no to that and, you know, you being a stay at home wife and uh, if he's saying no to these things, at least he's being honest and honorable. Okay. And he could say, Hey, you know, but this is something that I want to, I would want to be with you. I still want you to build with our family. I still would like to prove you prove to you that I can still make this happen for our family and for you so that you are going to be taken care of. Now, if the brother lies and say, yeah, I got you, I got you to take care of you. And he get married to him and his wife looking like, girl, we, 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 we don't got it like that. I don't know what he told you. You're going to be kind of upset. That's why we're going to get into this part in a minute about, you know, kind of getting to know that sister wife too, and proving her as well. And, you know, proving the brother and his family. All right. We're going to get to that in a minute, but first let's get to this. Uh, if you consider him being a second wife, you have to really ask yourself, do you want to move in with a woman and her children and this man? Or, hey, do you still want to dwell in a place that you're living in? That's also something to, to think about. Is this really for me? Or maybe I can, maybe I should just wait around and see. Because a lot of the times, you know, sisters might put themselves in toxic situations, being a second wife. And that's just based off of the experience that I've seen. Uh, I will never forget, I was dealing with a situation where a, a brother brought over a second wife to our household and then he brought his first wife and it I, all hell broke loose all hell broke loose and i was just like what what's going on you know the first wife didn't you know she was trying and the second he wasn't really trying to pay her no attention the kids her kids was there the daughters was there and they doing it in front of the daughters and they going back and forth and it was just ridiculous like i don't know y'all i've just seen so many things and i personally have not yet to see any fruitful Israelite uh, marriages uh, that I know for certain that they're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and that they've uh, been fruitful and multiplied. I, I personally have not seen that, and I, I I want different for our nation. I would love to see that. Sisters really got to make the right decisions because you don't want to get with a man, you know, and have that. I'm gonna take your man spirit. Where I don't gotta talk to her. Who? What she? What? What I need to talk to her for? What do you mean? Do you? What do you need to talk to her for? That's literally your sister. That's your sister now. That could lie and say that his wife. You don't want to talk to his uh first wife because he told you that she don't keep the commandments. That she said that if she found out he was getting a second wife, she was gonna stab her, fight her, do whatever to not have her in the picture. He could paint the, the wife out to be evil. But lo and behold, the whole time the sister taking care of family, charity, alms, deeds, good works, whatever the case may be, a righteous sister, there for other sisters, families, etc. But the brother is not telling you the 100% truth about that sister. And personally, another red flag is if a brother is talking bad about his wife to you because he's going to do the same thing to you that he's doing to his wife. Don't get with a brother that's talking bad about his wife to you because honestly, really, it's almost kind of like none of your business. You know, that's your sister at the end of the day, but that kind of goes into 
uh that's a lot of drama that's stirring up that's like a mummering a lot of drama going on you know whatever problems that sisters have uh that a brother might have with his wife and he's telling you everything that she's doing wrong you know that's kind of a red flag and I'm just going based off of how I think a man would conduct himself and how I think my husband would conduct himself I could never see my husband going to you know, I don't want to rotize out another woman complaining to her about me. If he's looking for this woman to be his wife, that's very childish. All right. That's a red flag. If the brother is talking bad about his first wife. And you should have you should you should want to build a relationship with his first wife because y'all are a team now. Y'all are a team to help your husband out. Whatever your husband needs, y'all, whatever his needs are, his desires are, whatever he might need this done, he might like this a certain way. Now, two is better than one. It's Mark 12, 13, 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So you should love that sister like you love yourself. You should want to have a relationship with that sister. You should want to help that sister. You should want to be a friend to that sister. Because if a sister was dealing with, if you was in her position, you would want the same respect. You would want a sister to show you some type of respect. And say, hey, this sister has been married to this man. She obviously knows this man. My goal being married to him is to be his helpmate. Not to take him away from his family, his first wife. Because some sisters have that, I'll take your man spirit. And if you have that spirit on you, you really need to rebuke that. Because it's not about taking anybody. You're not implementing the curses on a household. That the father leaves the wife of his bosom and his children his eyes evil upon his children if you have that mind frame then you're a wicked woman if you feel like you can take somebody's husband away from his family that's satan so if you have that spirit on you where you like "Mm, i can i can take her husband from her in a quick second that's what i want to do i look better than her my garments better than her you a wicked woman. That's, that's, I hate even saying that out of my mouth. That's wicked as hell. So if you're thinking like that, then the Lord is going to render you according to your works. If you're being, if you're looking to be a second wife and you're thinking about taking somebody's husband from them. And I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted that I even had to say that out of my mouth, but that's really what it is sometimes. And sisters, if you feel like that, and if you feel like you got to, you, that I'll take your man's spirit, then you need to repent. And you really need to focus on the most high. To be completely honest, instead of trying to destroy a household, trying to take a brother away from his, a righteous brother is not going to be swayed by a woman to take, to, to leave his family anyway. So a real brother, a real righteous brother, not going to leave his family to deal with you. He's going to be like, all right, well, you ain't the one for us then. All right. But, you know, long story short, sisters should just have respect for that first wife and try to get to know her and prove her as a friend as well. If a brother say, nah, you don't need to talk to her. You don't got to worry about her. She, she crazy. That's a red flag. That is a complete red flag. Because why would you want to talk to a brother whose house not in order? And that's just keeping it real. The scripture says, let everything be done decently in order. If a brother house not in order with his first wife and his children, and she, you always hear that she mad at him because of this, and he doing this and the third, and they staying with his mother, but he really want to be with you. He wants you to move out there. Y'all all in her, the, the, uh, his mother house. Now you married to him and 
Y'all all dealing with what? What do that sound like? That sounds crazy. That sounds like things aren't being done decently in the order. It sounds like you might have put yourself in a predicament that you can't almost get out of. Because now you're married to this man. You're bound to this man. Because you didn't see the red flags. That, hey, this brother don't got his stuff together. You want to be with a man that has his things in order. Who talks highly of his wife. In some situations, that might not be the case. Because some sisters uh, might not really be in the truth or whatever the case may be. It's kind of, you know based off of the the real the situation but i'm just trying to say you don't want to be with a brother that's talking terribly about his wife to you and saying that he don't want you to have a relationship with her that's a red flag okay because i know personally lord forbid i would ever have to be somebody's second wife but I would want to get to know that sister and say, hey, you know, how do you feel about this? You know, I know this is your husband and I know you don't know me. Uh, you know, I know you have children and I'm just, you know, a woman that's that's get that's you know, proving your husband. And I'm, I'm trying, you know, to get to know y'all to see, you know, what I can help y'all with. And, you know, I love your husband. I respect your husband. And I, you know, want to be I really want to be a part of your family, et cetera. That's how a righteous woman is going to think when it comes to being a part of a household. What can you help bring to the table? What can you help this man with? How can you help this sister? So that they're able to serve their husband in a more uh, timely manner, whatever, you know, maybe he might want stuff done faster or whatever the case may be, how you can be how you two can be a great help to this brother. Okay? Because that's your sister at the end of the day. Y'all, when people see, when I see sister wives, I'm like, okay, where's your sister wife? That's what I be thinking in my head. head. I'm like, okay, where's where's your sister wife? Because now y'all are kind of like the same person. Not saying that you're not going to have your own identity, but sisters kind of look at other sisters like, okay, this is the house of so-and-so. You're a part of this man's household now. You're this man's possession. So y'all are pretty much two peas in a pod. So y'all going to have no choice but to really get to know each other, to be there for one another and to prove one another as well. I really want sisters that are considering being second wives um, to think about this situation. If a brother is courting you, And the brother just had a baby. You would have to really think about how that would make your sister wife feel. Your quote unquote future sister wife feel. How would you feel if you just had a baby and your husband was talking to someone else? I want sisters to actually love their sister like they love themselves. Because... I know you would care. I know you would care if a sister, if you just had a baby and your husband is on the phone talking about getting married to somebody else. I know. I know 100% for a fact you would care. And I'm going based off the times we're living in right now. I'm not talking about uh, the ancient world. I'm talking about right now. For some reason, I see that a lot. I see that a lot of sisters are real inconsiderate are real selfish, don't really show sisterly love, don't let that be you. You don't know the sister, you don't check up on her, you don't ask about her while she's at a, you know, one of the most uh, vulnerable, vulnerable time in her life, dealing with the postpartum period. And I see that a lot within our community. Sisters are literally talking to brothers while the brother just had a baby. Y'all don't even care. Y'all don't care. And I want sisters to really take a moment and think about that. And think about how that is affecting that your sister wife. 
do you think that, you know, she's really going to like you when you guys first meet? No, she might be on the edge. She's dealing with a range of emotions. She's dealing with she just had a baby. Her body is different. She's changing. There's something wrong with her. Whatever the sister got to deal with while you on the phone with her husband. And although you can say, well, you know, it doesn't matter how she feels. It only matters how her husband feels. But again, you want to be at peace with this sister because y'all are still sisters at the end of the day. So why wouldn't you still be considerate? All right. In Ecclesiastes 6 and 6, be in peace with many, nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. But the point of the fact is be in peace with many. So you should want to be at peace with that sister. All right. In Matthew 5 and 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So you're going to be blessed if you're that sister and you kind of like a peacemaker. You're like, dang, sister, um, you know, your husband wants to court me. Hey, and sometimes, a lot of times, uh, Jake is not really too considerate or don't really understand how delicate a woman is after having a baby. But as a woman, you know what? Dang, this sister just had a baby, uh, you know. Maybe, you know, maybe we can court a little bit later till after, you know, she's over her postpartum period. You know, that's something that I really think sisters should take into consideration. Because when sisters get into a postpartum depression, sometimes it might be hard for a sister to get out of it. And she has to take care of this man's seed. And that's very important. So sisters, you have to make sure that you're loving sisters like you love yourself. You have to be considerate. Or if you don't want to be considerate, it's like you can, you're can you creating that situation between Hannah and Penaniah and 1 Samuel, where there's this strife, there's this contention. 1 Samuel, we can start at 4 because we already read it. Uh, Salakia verse 5, But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sword so they were adversaries so you really do you really want to be an adversary with your sister do you really really want to be somebody's adversary i know i don't that's the last thing i want is to be a, my sister's adversary all right and her adversary she provoked her sore so she she was being a spirit to Hannah. And you don't want to be that sister that's being a spirit to another sister. You kind of provoking the sister to get mad. You calling the brother at two o'clock in the morning while you know he with his wife and a baby. If they live in the same house. Whatever the case may be, you're provoking the sister. You don't want to be that sister that's provoking the first wife to be angry. And you don't want to be that sister, you know, that second wife that's coming in because your husband wants to have children and um, your husband wants to have children and the first wife might not be able to have children. And you don't want to provoke her like you don't want to provoke her like Penaniah was provoking Hannah because look how that made Hannah feel was depressed. To the point where when you read further down, that she was crying. She wasn't, she was in there praying and crying. Where Eli thought she had a spirit on her. He thought she was drunk. But she was very sad that she couldn't have children. So sisters get really upset, you know, and are really vulnerable after they give birth to a baby and when they can't have children. So if you're a sister that's there uh, during the postpartum period, you have to ask yourself why. I don't know why. If you are a sister that's there, you know, that's that wants to help that husband raise up seed, don't provoke your sister. Don't provoke her. Don't don't act like you're better than that sister. OK. Because the Lord is going to render every man according to their works. So you think that you, you know, you better than the sister. But the Lord could jack you up. This is Genesis 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister 
and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. So if you're a second wife going into a situation where the sister can't have children, she might envy you. She may, she may envy you. Okay. There might be times where she's going to be happy for you, but deep down inside, she, the sister might envy you because she can't give her hu her husband children. You know, sisters, we're very emotional. So a sister may envy you and you have to ask yourself, you know, is that something that I want to deal with? You know, it's something light. Sometimes it can be heavy. Like the situation with Hannah and Penaniah to the point where a spirit might come on you and vex you. But let's jump down to the days. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take also, Salakia, wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. So you can tell it was some type of tension. It was a spirit, Salakia, spirit of envy, jealousy that had Rachel and Leah at odds. She said, you know, she just asked for some mandrakes. So you could tell it was bothering her spirit. If she like, oh, sh you asked her for my mandrakes. It's bad enough you took my husband. Like what? You know, so it's going to be that contention, that spirit. I'm not saying it's going to be like that all the time. You know, I know Rachel and Leah love one another. It's not going to be like that all the time. You know, I don't want to rock design. Every, you know, situation is different, but I'm just here to bring you, you know, the different scenarios based off of the word of the Lord. Okay. I don't think it's expedient for sisters to rush and try to be in a relationship when a brother just had a baby. Everybody might think differently. Everybody might be raised differently. But I know as a grown woman, Lord forbid, like I said, I'm in that situation. Unless, you know, all hell break loose, you know how it is. It's going to be, you know, every woman joined to one man, you know, you know, Jacob's trouble here. And we all, you know, people would say that's going on now. But some sisters literally just don't care about sisters. And I think that's what gets me. I, I want sisters to really love sisters as they love themselves. And really be considerate of what a sister may be going through. It's not just about you being somebody's second wife. You have to act, take in consideration that first wife and how she may feel. Especially if she just had a baby. Especially if she has children. And if you're a mother, you will understand, you know, nobody really wants people that they don't know around their kids, around their children. If I personally don't know you like that, I barely want you to even pick my baby up. When people pick up, try picking my baby, I kind of give them the side eye. Like, you can go ahead and put him down. Like, because I don't know you. So you have to prove people. You have to take the time to prove that sister. And be considerate and show love. If you know that you're dealing with a brother and the brother just... Uh, the brother just had a baby and his wife is in the truth. And talk to her. Ask her how she feels about this because you have to deal with her as well. Pretty much touched on finances, um, living situations, the good relationship with the first wife. All right. You want to you want to have a good relationship with your first wife, with the first wife. And I say that just like with any. Um, you, you guys are working for your husband now. Okay. As a team. And if you had a job before, you know that they have team building exercises. They'll have team activities, lunches, softball games. They'll have things outside of the office workplace where everyone builds up a relationship, you know, just so that everyone can work together smoothly to get things done. And that goes into if a brother say, I don't want you talking to her. How can you help? The, how can she help? That doesn't make any sense. Y'all are a team now. 
Y'all should be doing things to help build y'all relationship up so that y'all can be there for one another. And when it comes to children, let's say, for instance, uh, the brother has children, he has a family, but you don't have any children, okay? Now you have to ask yourself, you know, you're kind of like a mom. You're a mom now. Welcome to the club. You're a mom. And that's just what it is, all right? Because those are his kids. Those are your husband's kids. That's your husband. Y'all two are one flesh. So his kids are now your kids. Just like if you were um, in a relationship prior, you know, you was in a world, but you're not in a, um, but you, you, you know, repented. Now you're Israelite woman, keeping the law, such as commandments. You know, you get a new husband. Now you might have a, a joint family. Now you have the children involved. And you're joining another, uh, fa- you're joining another family. You have to explain to your children, hey, look, you know, I'm, you know, going to be a second wife, uh, this, that, and the third. This is what it is, you know. Explain to your children, you know, what is going on. So don't just throw them in the mix and they all looking around confused. Everybody trying to figure out what's going on. No, take your time to prove that brother prove the family to see if this is a good fit for your family if you already have children prior to meeting this man all right this is ecclesiastic 6 and 7 if thou wouldest get a friend prove him first and be not hasty to credit him prove the brother you you might think you might say oh that brother a good father he a good dad he a good husband to his first wife i really want to be a part of their family just based off of some of the things that you've seen I remember this one sister, she was courting a family and the she had kids prior. He had a wife and children and she was courting the husband. And what she used to do was send them boxes of, you know, French shirts. And she used to do nice things for them and, you know, to show, you know, sisterly kindness and to show that, you know, she was like a Proverbs 31 woman. And that's what that's what I encourage sisters to do. You don't want to become a sister wife behind the other sister's back. The sister has no idea. You want to build a good rapport, you know, with this sister and so that you can have a good name. I prove, prove these brothers, prove them. But I have those videos already on my channel. So Lord willing, y'all can go watch those if you haven't watched them about proving a brother when it comes to the courting process. Don't be quick to say this is a good man to have now the man around your children and he's not a good brother. You found out that he be acting this type of way, that he get drunk and start acting crazy, beating up the kids or whatever the case may be, Lord forbid, but stuff like that happens. Prove a brother. You want to prove that family. You can't be a sister wife and go into a situation and say, them ain't my kids. Them ain't them her kids. She, her kids, they, you want apple juice? Did you go ask your mother? Because I, because my sons, they got apple juices, but I don't know about you. If you think like that, well, go repent. If you thinking like that, you need to make sure that you're showing brotherly love and sisterly love to them children and to that sister. It's not all about you. The world does not revolve around uh, sisters that want to be a second wife and come in and you know, think that they run stuff. It's not about you. It's about that brother, that man, and you helping him and y'all and his wife, his first wife, and y'all are a team now. And y'all are helping help build his household up. And that's pretty much all I wanted to bring out, just the finances and the children and the proving the family and being considerate. Uh, you know, to the first wife, because I just I always see like a lack of consideration, a lack of respect, a lack of um, sensitivity, a lack of care, a lack of care that sisters may have when it comes to entering into someone's family. And to keep it 100 percent real with sisters as well. 
I'm just going to say it. You know, there's a lot of brothers in this truth. There's a lot of brothers in this truth that do not have wives. It's a lot of brothers that don't have wives. It's a lot of good brothers. I see it all the time. It's a lot of good brothers that don't have wives in this truth. You know, don't feel like you have to be somebody's second wife. Ain't nothing is wrong with being a second wife. Nothing is wrong with being a second wife. But, you know, you you have options as an Israelite princess and daughter of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. You know, Abigail was a second wife. You know, you have options. Right now, at least, you know, to say, hey, you know what? This brother has a family. You know, it might be a brother that, you know, don't. Is this something that I really want to deal with? Do I really want to deal with this sister and her kids? And, you know, get, you know, I don't have no kids yet. Now I got to be their mother. And, you know, do I really want to deal with that? You know, that's something to think about based off of how I would want my daughter to be, how I would want it to be for my daughter. I personally wouldn't want my daughter, you know, to be a second wife. But, you know, if she really loves this brother and this brother is a good man and, uh, you know, then I'll support her. You know, if my husband thinks that it's suitable for her. But, you know, sisters, there's 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 a lot of good brothers out there. And it's true. You also want to let reason go before every enterprise. That's Ecclesiastes 37 and 16. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. So you want to let reason, meaning you're thinking about becoming a second wife and you're thinking about everything I just brought out. And you're also getting counsel before you get married to this brother. And it's important to watch my marriage videos. It's important to get marriage counseling before you actually get married, especially when you're dealing with another woman or children or family involved, okay? Long story short, sisters, six and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So you really wanna continue to seek first, you know, the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Shai, and then he'll add a righteous man unto you. All I wanted to touch on, Lord willing, y'all keep enduring through the Spirit. Shalom.